Um, sometimes you forget, you know, sometimes just being a Christian athlete, it may be uncommon or it may be rare and you sometimes feel alone in that aspect. And so just to know that there's always a community of family that we like to call it to come back on and always um, just lean on was incredible. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Tim Brown, author of the book, uh, Uncommon Athletes. I'm also on staff here in Central and Columbus area with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And I'm blessed to have with me a good good young fella, uh, uh, Dan Lee. Uh, Dan was a, a young camper back in the day, uh, auto leader, and now and now he's a freshman at Williams Williams College in uh, Massachusetts and is there playing basketball. All that. Dan, you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, for sure. I'm Dan, Dan Lee. I'm a current freshman at, uh, as coach said, Williams College. I'm a biology major on the pre-med track. Um, I went to Dublin Drum High School in uh, Dublin, Ohio, where I played basketball there and um, and where uh, my family and I live as well. Oh, great, great. Dan, could you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, your experience? I knew you were involved in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Actually, you came to camp. I remember you came about fourth, fifth grade. Uh, and then uh, your junior year, you came back as a huddle leader. Uh, can you talk about what brought you back to FCA? Because you reached out to me and said, hey, hey, coach, I want to I want to do something this year. With What brought you back to FCA? Man, I mean, it's it's just a multitude of things, coach, but um, I can speak for um, a number of factors, definitely just the experiences I had, you know, like I was um, just having so much fun as a as a member or like a participant in the camps when I was growing up, just getting to know my huddle leaders and um, like my fellow um, huddle mates and just the impact they had on me, just like mentally as well as physically, you know, it was just a great time. Um, and I just kind of wanted to be that guy back again, you know, just extend the chain and um, really kind of just wanted to be a part of the program. It's really, it's really hard to find a program like FCA where um, the organization is just solely, um, devoted to making you a better person while um, getting you closer to God. And um, to throw, uh, have to, to throw in athletics there is just a dream. And um, it's something I've been excited for in my, like growing up as a kid until I got into high school. And I just really wanted to get involved and um, reach out to you and it was that easy. Oh, that's, that's great. We were glad, glad that you was with, with us. And then you took it to another level. Uh, you're that example of what we pray about, that students would uh, come through camp get involved in the camp, and then they would want to make an impact on their school campus. So how did that go about you becoming, you know, restarting or being a part of FCA at Dublin Jerome? Yeah, no, um, I, you know, this is following uh, my first time um, serving as a uh, camp counselor in the summer. I just really enjoyed, um, you know, throwing around um, what FCA has to say in its message. And um, I reached out to a couple of the FCA members, like you, Coach Brown, and I got in touch with uh, Wendy Fuse and Nate, and um, they kind of helped me set up um, some sort of FCA cuddle at Dublin Jerome. You know, we've never had one um, prior to um, 2019, and I was able to message and reach out to a number of faculty um, to help advise our club. And then we spoke to administration, got it set up. And before you know it, you know, I had barely even advertised the club that we had numbers of students just walking in at 7 a.m. on Thursdays, you know, it's like, I think that's the incredible thing is it's not at a very convenient time. It's very early in the morning, especially in high school when you're always waking up early. And just to see the number of people that were coming in was just a true blessing. And um, we kind of just rode that wave mm -hmm. throughout the year. We had, I don't think we ever decreased our number as we um, kept going throughout the year. We were just growing and growing and it was an awesome experience and started to become like a community which I really miss from high school, honestly, is that community that we built up where, you know, everyone was just welcome and it was super warm and loving. We'd bring in, you know, fellow classmates, student speakers. I'd reached out to a couple of junior and senior students to come in, reach out and just share their testimony. We had a couple of Ohio State alumni and current players come in and just a different variety of people come in and share their story and just try to impact as many lives as possible. And so it's been a huge success and I'm really excited to see where it's headed. Yeah, you, you mentioned impact there. What impact did you, uh, you know, you've been on that front line 
and knowing the challenges that young people are dealing with today, not just in the city, but in the suburbs, just all young people. What, what, what impact did you see FCA had on, 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 on the environment there at the school? Oh, for sure. I mean, honestly, um, I've, I've been in contact with people still as I'm in college, but um, sometimes you forget, you know, sometimes just being a Christian athlete, it may be uncommon or it may be rare and you sometimes feel alone in that aspect. And so just to know that there's always a community, a family that we like to call it to come back on and always um, just lean on was incredible, had an incredible impact on the students. Um, I know I had really deep and meaningful conversations with a lot of them towards the end of the year um, prior to my departure. And it was just um, just a true blessing to be able to have those experiences and um, see them motivated to want to really pursue their relationship, their relationship with God, as well as um, even talking about having the same impact that um, our senior leaders did on them when they become uh, upperclassmen, which is just awesome to hear. Wow, that's good stuff. Just, uh, now let, let's take it to the basketball court now. Let's take it to the court. I know you are a, a great player there at, at Dublin Jerome. I know your junior year, uh, they were, there were 12 seniors on the team. Uh, and you were kind of the only upperclassmen trying to fit in, trying to get some playing time. How did that work out for you? How were you able, what, what was it about you that allowed those seniors to kind of say, hey, let, let's get this guy a shot? Yeah, no, I mean, 12 seniors and me a junior, it's a, uh, it went exactly how you thought it would go. Um, every practice was a dog fight. You know, I never, practice was something that I was more nervous and scared for than games, honestly. But um, I just, you know, um, basketball is basketball. We're competitive, we play hard and um, start making a couple of shots and guys, our guys wanted to win. You know, they weren't about getting theirs. They wanted to win and they realized that, um, you know, having me in the rotation, getting me the ball and then having me get open, and make shots was, had gave us a better chance of winning. And so we started to grow as a, as a family. Um, definitely some rough patches getting there, but uh, when you have a tight knit group of seniors like that, that's expected. But once um, once they take you in and once um, we're all one, it's, you know, it's just pure love. And it's something that I, that I'll always miss. Yeah, now, now we go, now you get to your senior year where you're that guy now, you know, and there's a, uh, I think you were in the rotation, you were a starter and actually one, one other senior probably play some, and now you're that older guy. So what did you learn? What did you learn in that process to help help you become that leader? Man, it was it was an interesting, interesting uh, experience, you know, being from like the little baby brother to being the guy, you know, everybody's looking up to you. But um, something I learned with playing that group of 12 seniors is, you know, um, every opportunity you have is an opportunity to learn and help your teammates grow. You know, we want to pick each other up from our mistakes, especially when they're that young of an age and they're just starting to play some varsity basketball. Um, one of the most important things um, I really took to um, my senior year is um, an emphasis on putting in the work by yourself before and after practice. You know, I always pulled in the guys with me, gave them rides home, um, making sure that everybody's working, getting their shots in. You know, the season doesn't start in September. It starts in the summer. I'm sure you've heard before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, just passing down everything that I learned on the court, as well as off the court, you know, try to spend some time with the guys, get some food, get some dinner. Um, it was just a um, great experience. I um, really felt more mature as a player and as a friend. Um, and um, it, was, it was an awesome experience to really have to play that. Yeah, I know your senior year, your team was the first team to win a tournament game in four years, you know, uh, in Ohio High School Tournament. And it's kind of interesting. And then we, then COVID hits, you know, and then the season ends abruptly, so to speak. And then, and then you're ready to go to college, to William, Williams College, where you are now. And they decide not to have a season. You know, they postponed the basketball season. Uh, how did you react to that? What got you through that time? You know, how did you handle that? Yeah, no, it was definitely a series of highs and lows. I mean, winning our first uh, tournament game in uh, the past four years for our school, you know, coming as a freshman, we had not won prior to then. Um, it was incredible feeling and to have our season, you know, cut abruptly as many uh, as many student athletes are experiencing right now. It's just not the best experience. And um, then heading over to college, expecting to play a full season and having that canceled as well. Um, definitely hit hard, but um, the way I got through it, you know, is just always repeating to myself that 
I'm sure as everybody has heard, you know, God has a plan for you, but you know, he, uh, you know, he really does. And I mean, I think we all know that life is not going to work out perfectly and you're going to go, you're going to get through these lows, you're going to get through these difficult patches of times. And it's something that you just have to push through, you know, talk it out with your family, with your friends and with God. And um, I think I was able to just get through it by um, focusing on what I can um, impact, what I can do about the situation. Yeah. As you look at this situation and we know that God has a plan, we know all things work together uh, for the good. So what is that thing that God has been speaking to you? Uh, what is God, what, what do you believe God is trying to teach you through this, through this process? You know, I think God is trying to teach me that um, there's a saying that ball is life. And I'm trying to, I think he's trying to tell me that, you know, basketball is not everything about life. Mm. And it's not the only thing that matters in life. Maybe I put too much of my, too much of my thoughts and time into the game rather than spending more time with my friends and family, you know, trying, just trying to focus on bettering myself as a person and growing closer with God. And um, I think I've really grown from that, from that um, experience that I've had in the past where I feel like I'm in a great spot right now with my relationship with God, as well as my family and my closest friends, you know, just trying my best to really get together and just check in on each other, especially in a time where um, people can tend to get lonely quickly. Mm. And um, I think that for the better, God has really improved myself. He has helped me become a better person. And that's something I'm really, really blessed. Yeah, for. That's, well, yeah, that's well said. It's well said. God has a way of getting our attention, you know, and making sure that that he's number one. He says, uh, put no other gods before me. And sometimes we get caught up in the basketball piece and we, we, we may forget that. Uh, the, the other thing is, as I have a group of young persons and parents who are watching this, uh, you are a, a biology pre-med major at Williams College and a basketball player as well. Could you talk about how, how out of balance, how you balance both academics and athletics, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it, it could sound like a lot more than it is, but I just try to take it, you know, one, one day at a time as well as, um, just really focusing on, um, you know, how how blessed I am to be in the situation I am right now. You know, some some students will always have it worse than what you are in right now, and just knowing and being aware of your blessings. You know, having water, having food on the table is something that pushes me through the day. Knowing my family is, um, my parents are working their butt off at home just so I can get this education and have the opportunity to make experiences and relationships with others. is just something that gets me through the day. Um, for the most part, it's definitely my family. It's definitely, um, as well as God, you know, um, like I said, God, he does have a plan for you. And I think um, I really wanna help people as a career and um, it's a practical way of being uh, involved in the medical field. Um, and then for basketball, it's just, basketball has become more of like a mental break for me um, from all the academics and the um, classes and work. And I just think, you know, it's easy to get caught up with yourselves, with basketball, with your identity. And it's something that like, once you understand like basketball is uh, not your identity, you know, you can start to put yourself out in other aspects of life. That's your relationship with God. That's with your academics. That's with, um, you know, your social life. It's just a really great thing. And I think um, it's just a um, number of things that have helped me um, get through this um, very busy time. Yeah, I know you are a very serious guy there, Dan, and uh, <laughs> I got to get one good, you give me your favorite basketball experience story. Give me one funny, give me one funny story, because I know you're funny serious. Story. Give me one. Funny story, I'd say, um, I, I was, I was very gassed this one play. I was so tired. I, I've been playing like 30 straight minutes you know and uh I was I was on the bottom and um they were running some flex uh, m um offense we're on defense and so I was sitting in the bottom I literally switched every screen that came to me and I I don't think I took more than two steps that entire possession <laughs> and uh, on film you can just see all the other four guys just running around and I'm just sitting at the bottom just pointing around switching sure. screens and um I was that's a that's a video that always cracks me up yeah, it caught you, caught you on tape. Huh? You yeah, they got me. Got me. Okay, 
like you 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 chase him i'm just gonna stay right here you know i'll catch up with you later you know so just let me know when you get the rebound i'm ready though when you get the rebound you know? of course of course you know i'm now let go and get the rebound you know, we're running we're running yeah, we're we off to the races dude I, I i got my win back now <laughs> yeah let's go let's go but dan it's been a it's been a joy watching you uh, uh mature into the uh uh, young man, and, and I'm sure the, the man that you're going to become. And I want to encourage you, even during this time, you know, at the best, the best is yet to come. And I'm just excited for your faithfulness and your commitment to hanging in there. Because some guys would have just said, forget this, you know, no basketball. And I know you guys are still practicing every day, still getting after it, you know, knowing there's no season. But all that, all that's going to pay off in the end. It's going to be worth that time. And so I want to thank you for. Uh, 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 beginning FCA or, or getting FCA going to Dublin, Jerome, and I want you to know it's still going strong. That it's still going strong, and that, and uh, it, it's kind of that impact that you left in that in that school building, which is truly a blessing. Uh, so as we wrap up, Dan, just give me one word of encouragement uh, uh, to young people. You know, some people are struggling. Uh, you know, like in, for example, in Columbus Public Schools, you know, high school kids haven't been to school yet. A lot of schools are on hybrid and all that. Uh, your senior year was kind of cut short, you know, with no prom and all those kind of activities that just didn't happen. What word of encouragement, what, what word of hope would you leave to, to students? You know, I would say to them, you know, it's obviously tough um, being in that position, having to listen to someone else who's not in their position tell you um, advice. But, you know, there's always there's always light at the end of the tunnel. And um, I would just take it um, to them. I would tell them personally, you know, really try to um, um, affect and really try to think in a way where you try to impact the things that are within reach and in your control. You know, you don't focus on things that you can't control, things that are in God's hands. No, don't, you know, there's no need to start getting mad or disappointed or angry at um, external things such as the pandemic, but rather focus on what you can control. And, um, you know, as a student athlete, you're probably really bummed out that your season was canceled and um, probably disappointed. But I would say, you know, another way you can shift this is use this time to really, really make an impact on others, you know, uplifting your family and your friends um, and just try to make the best out of it because um, it's something that everyone is going through as well. Yeah. Well, wow, that's well said. That's well said. And I appreciate that, that word. And I'm sure that someone's going to take that to heart, you know, just control the things you can. You know, not worry about those other things. Just stay focused. Well, Dan, as always, it's a pleasure catching up. And I'm looking oh, forward to uh, uh, when you get back on that court, looking forward to some more of them good highlights, you know, but make sure that oh. you don't get caught not switching them screens now. You know, make sure you get out. Won't happen. Won't happen. They won't get me. All right. All right, Dan. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you. Appreciate right. it. Be blessed. Yeah.